Good morning, brethren. Church of the Living God, hello, hello. Well, woke up this morning with my mind. <laughs> woke up this morning with um, the Lord wanted me to look into something. And once again this morning, I was able to have the privilege to have fellowship with a dear friend of mine. And whenever myself and this dear friend of uh, mine, whenever we get together, the Lord produces. <laughs> so, and today is no exception. Um, I'm using OBS because we got something that we're going to look at online, but I'm trying this a little different today. So, get your authorized version of the scriptures. The theater of deception the theater of deception you and I we have talked at length before in the past about how coadjutors infiltrators how they infiltrate the tactics that they employ what they do how they all follow the same script which basically is from the Sacrita Monita. Um, the Sacrita Monita, the video that the Lord let me do uh, reading the Sacrita Monita will be in the description box of this video. Uh, please, if you can bear with me um, speaking to you, and uh, I do make a few boo-boos within that, but uh, to my knowledge, it's the only actual cover-to-cover -cover read through of the Sacrita Monita, but uh, that will be left in the description box. But in the theater of deception, you've heard the term um, theater of operations, right? That's a military term. And what that actually employs is how they go about things and whatnot. But I've always found it interesting that they use the word theater. Now, I know that theater in and of itself does not always mean a reference onto performance. But think about this, brethren. Think about this. Do you realize when it comes to these coadjutors, these devils, these pond scum, and these Jesuits that came up with this psychological operation known as the Poison Crown? Okay? The Jesuits are the ones who created all this nonsense. The Jesuit order working for Catholicism, Satan, which uh, Catholicism is Satan's church, okay? Do you realize... Brethren, especially with these fakes, do you realize that they're actors? That they are performing in a theater? Ever think about that? For example, um, there are some people out there that are worthy of what is known as an Academy Award. Um, a certain young man who is really a good actor at playing the perpetual victim <laughs> because he was held at gunpoint, right? <laughs> crazy, man. You're crazy, boy. But uh, that, that young man deserves an, an Academy Award for his acting. Quite an actor. In the theater of deception. You, you got that uh, <laughs> lovely individual over in England um, who is also a very good actor. Worthy of an Academy Award. And and his underlings also are very good Actors, they wear a good facade. They wear a good facade, don't they? Got to remember, brethren, a lot of these people, these devils nowadays, they're, they're mere actors. They're putting on a performance. They're wearing a facade. Okay? Acts chapter 8. Let's begin in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. We will be reading verses 9... On to verse 11. Acts chapter 8, verses 9 on to verse 11. But there was a certain man called Shimon, who before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And when you think about these devils, that all they do is point the finger, make accusations, attack and attack and attack, which is the extent of what they can do, okay? 
what are they what are they ultimately doing they're putting on a facade that they are standing for truth when in fact their father is the devil but they're trying to draw people away from number one the truth and also to draw people after them okay because they're they're all pretty much narcissists okay they, they all, you know, the whole world revolves around them. They think every video you make is about them. Don't you there, boy? Yeah, yeah, the devil's in that head of yours. <laughs> I hope the Lord works that out for you. I really do. I really, really do. I really do. And on to you, dear young man. If the Lord actually does save you, I'll be one of the first ones there. For you if the Lord actually does save you I'll be one of the first ones there for you but making him giving out that himself was some great one oh isn't that what it's all about right these devils want to make themselves out to be a great one giving honor unto their father the devil right to whom they all gave heed this is what they want see these devils want the whole world to pay attention to them. Kind of like what the Jesuits are doing with all this psychological operation that is going on right now. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Sorceries. Looking at verses 10 and 11 specifically again. To whom they all gave heed. Talking about Shimon, who bewitched the people with sorceries. Okay? Sorceries, whether it be by drugs or by woo -hoo -hoo, magic. It's magic, man. Huh? Yeah, right. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself with some great one. How many of you lost people are putting your trust in the Catholic disease creators? In Fauci! In our government to watch your backside! You, you, you got a screw loose there, boy. You got a screw loose if that is what you're doing. You're trusting in, oh, trusting in the science. <laughs> science! Science! Yeah, trust in the science. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's feeding you this? Uh, that'd be the Jesuits. Satan and his army from his church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's Roman Catholicism. You and I, we have talked at great lengths about the Jesuits. It's a whole playlist. Go check it out, okay? But see, Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, is giving herself out that she is some great one. Uh, and she, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest. And today, you know, gotta, <laughs> yeah, see that? Yeah, yeah, know where I stand, right? Uh, from the least to the greatest, rolling up them, them, them sleeves to get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah, yeah. And to him, they had regard. Because that of a long time he bewitched them with sorceries. My nation, I'm, I'm an American, speaking about America. My nation is bewitched by sorceries. Because the CDD, uh, C, uh, CDC, Catholic Disease Creators, run by the Jesuit order, have made themselves to be a great one. And everybody, from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the great power of God, saying that this is the great power of God. And you got these Christians in the church buildings telling you people, oh, it's the Christian thing to do to roll up your sleeves, take the steel of the Jesuit poniard, and bow and lick the foot of Arturo Sosa, the head of all Catholicism, the superior, superior general of the Jesuit order. Okay? He's the one who's in control. Remember, Francis is subservient unto Sosa. Okay? Francis? <clears throat> Francis, he's a Jesuit. Okay? And according to Jesuit doctrine, he's subservient to Sosa. Hey, you provincials, ain't that the truth, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But 
Now, when you got somebody who is influential or a system or a man who is influential like that, who wants to make themselves out to be a great one, to who all give regard, what does that usually create? It creates confusion. Go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We will be reading verses 23 on to verse 34. Acts chapter 19, verses 23 on to verse 34. Follow me along, of course, in the authorized version of the scriptures. I hope you have been doing so. Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 23 on to verse 34. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. That way. That way of the cross. The way of the church of the living God. The way of salvation. Okay? For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for the Roman Catholic Mary, here known in scripture as Diana or the Queen of Heaven, okay, who made, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain onto the craftsmen. So this Demetrius was a great one amongst the silversmiths, okay? It was a great one. And check this out. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, fellow Jesuits, uh, putting this into the equation, the fellow Jesuits are bringing themselves together, you know, uh, bringing everybody together under the banner of Rome, right? Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. By this craft. Very interesting choice of word right there by this craft. And what do you seek? Enter the apprentice? Light. <laughs> but what is he basing this off of? When he calls these people together, what's his number one argument? Sirs, ye know by this craft we have our wealth. And when you listen or read the Secreta Monita, the Jesuits are all about that money, man. They're all about wealth. Wealth onto the Jesuit. It's all the money and property and gains and stuff like that. Mm. But see, that's what they're basing this off of because their, their pocketbook is affected. Okay? Their gains. You know, like when Paul uh, said to that one woman possessed with the spirit of divination, so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command thee, get out of her. And when the, her master saw that their gains were gone, mm, mm, can't serve God and money. Can't serve God and mammon there, big boy. Yeah, yeah. But that's very interesting. See, it would be another thing if this Demetrius and the like such as Demetrius, guys who want to set themselves up as great ones, okay? It would be a different thing if they actually believed what they were shoveling, okay? But as we kind of get the hint here that with Demetrius, his number one concern was his money. But then he says, look at this. Moreover, you, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul, hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Hmm. So is craft, saying that there are no gods which are made by hands. Absolutely. So again, tying it into his, uh, his craft and where they get their money. Verse 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, meaning our, how we make our money, but also the temple of the great goddess Mary of the Catholics. Oh, excuse me. The great goddess Diana should be despised. Then he brings that up. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and all the world worshipeth. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. That's in Revelation chapter 17. You ought to know where to find that by now, dear brother, dear sister. If you don't... <laughs> anyway, 
Anyway, just beg your pardon. His basis for all of this was the money. It would have been a different thing. Not right, but see, for him to actually believe in this Diana of the Ephesians, the Roman Catholic Mary, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It would be different if he actually ascribed to that. The only reason why he ascribed to that was because of his money. Because it gave him money. Not that he actually believed that. So he was like putting this in there. It's like, well, uh, number one, we're going to lose our money. That's the most important thing. But hey, great uh, Mary of the Catholics, excuse me, Diana of the Ephesians will be despised. See, his basis was money. His basis was himself. His basis was based off of the flesh. Okay? Because what, what does money profit? What does money profit if not things that are needful for your flesh? Huh? Because doth not our Lord say, Come, uh, drink, eat, uh, drink milk without money and without price? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, clouded on that verse right now, but if I can remember, I'd try to put it in the uh, uh, description, uh, in the comment section. But his number one basis was what affected him financially, meaning his money, meaning what was for his flesh. Okay? Okay? And then he added the religious flair. And how does Satan tempt people? How does he tempt people? There are several ways, but when you think about it, when Satan tempts people, it always correlates onto something being magnified in flesh. Not in spirit, but in flesh. Because Satan is all about man, remember. Let's continue this. So we see what uh, Demetrius was basing his thing off of. Okay? Let's continue. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath. And cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So they were taking upon themselves this thing of being religious in order to protect their financial gains, to protect their lifestyles, to protect themselves, to protect their desires, their lusts, and so forth. Mm. Mm. And that's what Satan, that's what he aims at. That's what he gets at. He wants you, dear friend, to pay attention to yourself, to your flesh, and things that pertain to your own well-being. Not that we should be totally ignorant of that. No, no, no. But see, here's the thing. If you are of the church and living God, the Lord will provide for you. So seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be provided for you. Where Satan's like, if you fall down and worship me, I will be thine. And it always correlates onto worldly things. And because of Mr. Demetrius and rallying all his friends together who love their money, just like the Jesuits do, and the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. Yeah, when a mass of confusion and deception is like that, on such a scale, sometimes it's not wise for us at the Church of the Living God to get in there, but to stand back and let it destroy itself. And then when it destroys itself, then come in. But then again, that's directed by the Lord. Verse 31, And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Theater of deception. Theater of deceit. Hmm. Some therefore cried one thing. We're going to look at this here in just a minute. And some another. For the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not where they were come together. <laughs> Verse 
Verse 33, And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And right here we're seeing a very good example of crowd control, crowd manipulation, which what these devils are really good at here on YouTube and on other platforms as well. They use crowd manipulation tactics. Very good. You see this in many, many of these devils. Type in your YouTube search, Brian Denlinger, and look at all the devils who attack him, okay? He's the best example I got, okay? The best example I can give you. You put that guy's name in, look at all the people that go after him, okay? That's it, <laughs> okay? What is that? That's crowd manipulation, trying to uh, manipulate people before they in, get into anything, okay? That's what that is. Like I said, that's the best example I could think of, okay? So beg your pardon. But more on this about the confusion, okay? Look at, look at verse 32. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. So getting everybody together is confusion pretty much until there comes that man of sin, the son of perdition, to lead all you lost people. Let's take a look at this. Now, bear, bear with me. Bear with me here. Okay, bear with me. Okay, up, oh, up, oh, get that smaller for me. All right, all right. Now, bear with me. Now, all we're gonna do here, as you can see, we're on Google. All we're gonna do is, is my Flurona. <laughs> Flu. Rona. You see that? Okay. Flurona. Now this is not the fourth or third variant. There is talk of this, what is this called? This B16, uh, what is it? IHU variant. But the Jesuits are like, no, 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 no. See, the Jesuits want us to tromp on that to lead away people and whatnot. But no. This, this Flurona thing, this, this is very interesting. This is very interesting, okay? Now, when you look, as you just saw, I put Flurona in the Google search, okay? And apparently, where is that one? Um, Flurona, apparently, if you see right here, Flurona, Israel records its first case of patient with COVID and flu at the same time. And apparently two women that were with child are the ones that in Israel um, where this uh, corona and flu thing first appeared, apparently. Um, there's not really much information on where this first appeared, okay? But we're going <laughs> we're going to look at the Washington Post on this one, okay? Okay, check this out. What is Flurona? <laughs> Corona gonna get you? Influenza co-infections reported as the all-seeing eye surges. Omicron, that's the eye, okay? Remember, Corona is a crown. Delta is a triangle or a pyramid. Omicron, the all-seeing eye. The eye of Horus, eye of Sauron, okay? So, <laughs> coronavirus, so fluorona surges, uh, fluorona infections as the all seeing eye surges. Okay? Yeah. So, let me get this straight. All right. And you see, oh, yeah, yeah, what a, quite a, quite a picture there. Okay. New year, new <laughs> coronavirus term. See, these Jesuits are the masters of euphemisms, euphemistic language. Change the name of, con of the condition, you change the condition. Unfortunately, that devil, George Carlin, who's burning in hell right now, um, he did some really good, he talked about this himself. 
Um, I don't recommend you listen to him because he's quite profane and disgusting. But George Carlin himself brought up a really good point about euphemisms and euphemistic language. Also, euphemistic language is also talked about in 1984 by George Orwell, okay? Jesuits are the masters of euphemistic language, okay? And you can see it right before your eyes, dear people. And with this whole thing about the fluorona, okay, we're going to read a little of this. But note that, new year, new coronavirus term, okay? You read the dictionaries from where Webster 1828 onto modern dictionaries, you see how words change their meanings, okay? How does that happen unless someone is changing them? Oh, the devil, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, and his church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. Remember, who wrote history, by the way? Who wrote history? Our Lord wrote history for us here in the scripture. But history that is being fed to the masses, being fed unto you, who wrote that? Catholicism. The Jesuits. The Jesuits have rewritten history. Don't forget that. Don't you ever forget that. Don't you ever, ever forget that. Okay? But... New year, new coronavirus term. Euphemism. Many people around the world kicked off 2022 by searching for more information about my fluorona. Beg your pardon, I'm sorry. After Israel reported that two young pregnant with child is the scriptural term, women had tested positive for both coronavirus and the flu. Corona has never been, the virus, coronavirus has never been isolated, okay? Uh, certain strands of influenza have, okay? There, why are we looking at this? There's a reason why this is coming up right now, okay? Because this coronavirus is pretty much no more than a severe case of the flu. But see, right now, they're trying to spread them apart. It's odd. It's odd because the Church of Satan who wants to bring everybody together to blur distinction wants to make a distinction here. Why is that? Let's, let's, let's read. Doctors have long been concerned about the potential impact of a twin-demic. Pay attention to this rhetoric, brethren, by the way. By a of a twin demic. So what? Now you got the corona gonna get you and the flu. Oh, oh wow. Wow, yeah, yeah. Doctors have long been concerned about the potential impact of a twin demic, with influenza cases rising as COVID-19 cases threaten to overwhelm hospitals <laughs> and called on people to get flu shots. And the steel of the Jesuit poniard. You can see that. The link for this will be in the description box too, by the way. Okay. But then again, you saw how easy it was. Just type in Corona, uh, Fluorona. Okay. And then you go to Washington Post. Okay. You can see this yourself. Okay. But yeah, twindemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the other hand, fluorona refers to when one person has both respiratory infections at the same time, which health officials say is a possibility as cases of the highly contagious all-seeing eye variant of the corona gonna get you virus, poison crown, surge this winter across the world. Hmm. Here's what we know so far. What to know? Are cases of fluorona new? After two young women, uh, two young pregnant women tested positive for both the uh, coronavirus and influenza in Israel, it's interesting that they're tying it to Israel. Very interesting. Very, 
Very interesting. Remember, Catholics and Jesuitism, which is Catholicism, they hate the Jews. They hate Israel. Okay? They are replacement theology. We've talked about that in depth before. Not going to get into it now. But it's interesting that they're pinning this in Israel. Many local and global media outlets dubbed it Flurona in the headlines. Global media outlets. Global. Across the world. Global. Hmm. Who controls the media? Who controls the media? Oh, that would be the Jesuit order. Roman Catholicism. The Jesuits are the ones who control the media, dear people. If you don't know that, why, uh, hey, there's plenty of information for you within this channel, in the playlists. Go find it, okay? But the Jesuits are the ones that control the media, okay? So <laughs> many local and global media outlets dubbed it Flurona in the headlines. The Sun, a British tabloid, swiftly branded the co-infections uh, infection, double trouble. Oh, wow. That's nice. Okay. While the world is relatively, while the word is relatively new and rising in popularity, cases of flu and coronavirus co-infections are not. And fluorona is not a distinct disease, but refers to when a person has been infected with both viruses. So they are clearly not referring to this as the third variant. Uh, because remember, it started with the poison crown, it went to the pyramid, and now it's the all-seeing eye, okay? Like that son of perdition. It has a crown, a pyramid, the pyramid structure of his kingdom, the all-seeing eye, okay? Get it? Uh, but this, uh, they're, they're saying that this is not the uh, third uh, variant, or fourth variant, whatever you want to say. It's not that one. Uh, that one is coming. That one is coming. And fluorona is not dis a distinct disease, but refers to when a person has been infected with both viruses. Fluorona instances have been detected in countries including the United States, Israel, Brazil, the Philippines, and Hungary. Some even before the term was coined. Instances of the co-infection were reported in the United States almost two years ago, according to the report from The Atlantic. In February 2020, a man entered a New York hospital with a severe cough and, with a severe cough and fever. At the time, the city had not officially reported any cases of the coronavirus. The patient tested positive for influenza and was then tested for the coronavirus. Weeks later, results confirmed that he, along with three family members, had contracted both viruses. Now stop right there. Right there. See, see, you have to learn how to read this kind of rhetoric, brethren. What are they telling you? What is being said to you right now? Okay? Here's what they're getting at. Now look at this. Look at this. Okay? The patient tested positive for, for influenza. And, when, and was then tested for coronavirus. And what did he come in with? A severe cough and fever. Okay? So you got a cough. <clears throat> you got a fever. Ooh, which one do you have? Corona going to get you or the flu? Florona, both. Hmm. Oh, but which one right now is the dominant one? The all-seeing eye, right? Okay? What are they trying to do? The patient tested positive for influenza and then and was then tested for coronavirus weeks later results confirmed that he along with three family members had contracted both viruses so having both viruses so what does this mean think about it. if you're around somebody who has a sniffle who has a cough who has a fever Okay, what now with the introduction of this, what does this open the door for? Well, we don't know if you have the flu or the poison crown. So that means we better make sure that you have the steel of the Jesuit poniard and the flu shot. Do you, do you see? You see what this is? It's, it's opening up the door for them to 
push out their weapon of depopulation, the steel of the Jesuit poignard, brethren, people. This is what this is. This is blatant, blatant propaganda. This is blatant. Okay? Come on. Okay? Come on. This is what they're trying to do. Okay? They introduced both the flu and Corona gonna get you. That opened the door for them to get more what? Uh, more reason to pump the steel of the Jesuit poniard and the flu shots? Which eventually, because they have played the psychological operation the way they have, causing confusion, making themselves to be a great one. Who? The Catholic disease creators. The World Health Organization. Okay? They've made themselves to be great ones. All you lost people who have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard have that VMAT2 inhibitor that inhibits your pineal gland. Okay? You're looking to them as if they are some great one. And now they introduce this. And remember, the all-seeing eye is the predominant variant right now? Come on, people. This is blatant. They're, they're rubbing it in your face. As M.F. Cusack said in The Black Pope, the Jesuits must have uh, hopes that their plans would succeed or else they would not have made them public and, dare I say, so blatant. It was a daring act. But they, the Jesuits, are daring men. And think about how you people have been so hammered into submission, so hammered constantly, never ending, hammering into you. Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. And now that they're tying the two of these together, remember, okay, they're, they're trying to tie these two together. Why? To a, eventually do away with Fluenza. It's not fluenza. It's corona. You watch. However long we have, they're going to try to do away with it's no longer fluenza. It's corona. So if you have in reality the flu, you got a little sniffle, that must mean you have corona. We got to get you in to get your steel of the Jesuit poniard. Oh, that means you got the you got the flu. No, actually, you have the uh, you have corona gonna get you. We gotta haul you off to a camp somewhere. You see, you see what this is, brethren? Do you see, people? This is blatant. Okay, this is this is right smack dab in your face. Blatant propaganda. It's right here. Let's continue this. Where has Florona been reported? There have been other recent occurrences in the United States. A Houston teenager spent Christ Mass Day isolating in his bedroom. Note that after contracting the Corona Gonna Get You and the flu at the same time. Alex Zerlin, who had been vaccinated against the coronavirus, but not <laughs> see, look at this, but not the flu, was also tested for strep throat, but results confirmed he had only the former two infections, which he described as being like a mild cold after his diagnosis. Zerlin told ABC News that he was not aware the coronavirus and the flu could stack up, could stack up one on one another and that he would in the future get a flu shot as a prevention. Children in more than one hospital in South Florida have tested positive for both infections. ABC reported Wednesday Dr. Juan Dumios, a pediatric infectious disease physician at Johns Hop Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital said that the presence of multiple diseases in young people is something he has seen before. In rare occasions, I've seen five different viruses detected in the same child. Usually, 
a kid who has who was in daycare, he said, urging parents to vaccinate their children. God help you. Up to five. You can have a myriad of uh, viruses and don't know it. Ah, see, this, what this is, brethren, people, is opening the doorway to confusion. Can't pinpoint it. Can't, you won't be able to pinpoint it. But yet they want to do all the way with it and label it with Corona going to get you. See? This is injection introducing uh, into the theater of deception confusion. Do you see? Do you not see this? Huh? If not, then pull your head out from betwixt your buttocks. Let's continue. <coughs> Oh no, oh no. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh oh, uh oh. All right. A health official in the Philippines has also said that such co infections are not unusual. Edsel Silvana, a member of a technical advisory group in the National, National Health Department, said the country's first COVID related death stemmed from a joint case in early 2020. Silvana told reporters that the, that the early pandemic patient, a Chinese national, <laughs> like how they tie that in there, had COVID-19 and influenza B, as well as streptococcus pneumonia, according to local outlet ABS-CBN. Okay. An initial case report showed that the patient who was the world's first known COVID-19 death outside of China, had a fever, cough, and chills. Okay, uh, fever, cough, and chills. Like the flu. Okay, do you see? Do you see? You have a fever, cough, or the flu. <coughs> oh, you might have Florona. Well, remember, the all-seeing eye, Corona going to get you. That's the most predominant one right now, isn't it? People wake up. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Do you, do you not see this? Come on. Come on. Uh, even these wicked devils could see this. Then again, they're the ones who are more busy ta attacking the church of the living God rather than telling people and warning people of this kind of stuff. Because they have their agenda by the Jesuits anyway. But enough of that. Okay. Yeah. Where did we just... Uh, okay. Yeah. An initial case report showed that the patient who was the world's first known COVID-19 death outside of China had a fever, cough, and chills. It's an unfortunate confluence of events that you are exposed to two pathogens, said Silvana, who reminded the public to get vaccinated for the flu and pneumonia. Ah, this is... <laughs> The world has avoided a twindemic, but as flu cases rise alongside COVID, experts fear that could change. <sighs> oh, people. Okay. Hungary has also identified at least two Florona instances in recent weeks. Broadcaster RTL Reported Monday, as was the case in Israel, both patients were described as about 30 years old. And Brazil is battling an out-of-season flu outbreak, just as the all-seeing eye cases are starting to rise. Health officials there are con have confirmed six interesting influences of Florona across three states. Rio de Janeiro's Municipal Health Secretary Daniel Soronza, Soronz told Spanish news agency EFE, Isn't it in Rio de Janeiro where they have that big um, Son of Perdition statue, right? Rio de Janeiro? Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, okay. Daniel Soronz told Spanish news agency EFE that 17 more cases were also under investigation. In one occurrence, a 16-year-old tested positive for both viruses,
but had light symptoms. I oh, see, you can have very light symptoms and not know that the all-seeing eye is in you. <laughs> oh, but then again, they're going to be able to put that in there by saying, well, you might have the flu. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, oh, guess what? You got Corona going to get you. See, they're going to try to bury a natural thing such as flu with something that the Jesuit order has promulgated. You watch. You watch. You watch. Okay. In one occurrence, a 16-year-old tested positive for both viruses but had light symptoms, which his mother attributed to being fully vaccinated against both viruses, she told Brazilian media. Mm -hmm. Is Florona more common this year? In Israel's Bellinson Hospital, where, doctor, where doctors recently diagnosed the two pregnant women with both infections, cases of the coronavirus are rising amid the Omicron all-seeing eye outbreak, along with cases of influenza A, uh, influenza A. According to Arnon Vishnister, the director of Geneseology. So what does that mean? That's yes. That's a sophistry answer. Uh, yes. Yes. They're saying, yes, it's more common this year. Yes. Okay. See, they didn't answer. They, in, they didn't, they indirectly answered the question. That's something that uh, Jesuits are really good at. Sophistry. Okay. Let's see. In an interview with the Washington Post, Vish, Vishnister said that while cases of the flu were scarce last year, because, yeah, which was it? Was it the flu or corona going to get you? Okay? Perhaps because of more stringent lockdown measures and social distancing, they are roaring back. Of course they are. That's the Jesuits' plan. This year is different from last year. Now we have another challenge. He said, predicting that... Co-infections would probably continue to occur. Of course they are. Of course they are. Yeah. Some countries are on track to be hit much harder by the flu this year, while strict measures to control the spread of the corona gonna get you appeared to have largely prevented the twin demic scenario in 2020. That's the case in Jesuit United States. Which had, rec which had record lows of COVID surge last winter, but is now seeing, rising, now seeing rising flu cases. Europe's flu season is also just starting, and likewise expected to be worse this year. <laughs> and, and most recently here in America, I, th I believe it was on December 28th, where they had the worst day ever, ever! For uh, infections of some, or whatever, whatever. Yeah, and we're not even going to watch that video. We're almost done with this. Be concerned about the all-seeing eye, but not alarmed unless you're unvaccinated, Biden says. Biden. Vishnister, if I'm mispronouncing his name, I'm, I don't care said both pregnant women had the same symptoms and were given treatment to reduce their fevers. Ah, yes, same symptoms, but yet, remember, with the all-seeing eye variant, symptoms differ. My son-in-law had was afflicted with a biological weapon. He had different systems, uh, symptoms, his wife had different symptoms, and his son had different symptoms. Okay? But yet, they all had apparently the same thing, but yet different symptoms. But see, if you have like an influenza A, B, C, D, or whatever it is, you're going to have the same symptoms of that same strand. Okay? That's, okay, that's the science of it. If you, ha if you and I have influenza A, we're going to have the same symptoms. But yet, with the all-seeing eye variant... People have differing symptoms, but yet it's the all-seeing eye variant? 
Hello, people. Hello. Hello, McFly. Is this thing on? Okay, let's continue. Both were immediately placed in isolation before they eventually returned home with healthy babies. Oh, and I hope those babies weren't the alien looking babies. I hope they weren't. They probably were. God have mercy. According to Visnister, Vish, Vish, only one of the women had been vaccinated against the coronavirus. She had also been boosted. The other patient had not received any form of inoculation against either viruses. So one of them might be, okay. Okay. Pregnant patients visiting Bellinson, the Israeli hospital, are being tested for both viruses if they have symptoms on arrival. Some medical workers, along with people older than 60 in Israel, which is aggressively ramping up, its vaccination program are being offered a second booster. Apparently, what is it, in France or in Israel, they won't let you buy food unless you have the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Apparently. I can't verify that, but I have heard that is what is happening. While many countries track coronavirus and flu cases, there appears to be little data on how many people have them at the same time. As more reports surface about co-infections, health experts and doctors stress that coronavirus and flu vaccines remain the best way to protect against severe infections. I beg to differ. If you are vaccinated, the disease is very mild. But yet you can still get it. Mm -hmm. But it's less. The lesser of two evils, huh? Yeah, this is brilliant. Only the Jesuits can come up with nonsense like this and have people fall for it. Vishnister said of both the coronavirus and flu, women who have were women who were not vaccinated against the corona gonna get you were very sick. It's also a possibility that some patients will not be offered tests for both infections with hospitals around the world using different approaches to treating and diagnosing patients. What are the symptoms of fluorona? Here's, this ought to be good. The coronavirus and influenza are respiratory infections, which co can cause similar symptoms such as fever, coughing, fatigue, runny nose, sore throat, and diarrhea, along with muscle and body aches. So, if you have one of those, you go. If you go to a hospital today, uh, if you have any one of those, you're immediately going to be labeled as having the all-seeing eye variant. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. And just to make sure, they're gonna zap you up with two of them. Well, what what would that be? Uh, it's up to three right now to be fully. Uh, under the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And then they add in the fourth one of the uh, the flu shot. Oh, oh, people walking out uh, around out there with all kinds of stuff in them. Yeah, that's not natural. That's not from what God created. Yeah, yeah. So right there, Fever, coughing, fatigue, runny nose, sore throat, diarrhea, muscle ache, body ache, blinking, breathing, walking, talking. Guess what? Guess what? It's a good possibility you might have the see all seeing eye variant. Both infections can be fatal, although the severity of each diagnosis depends largely on an individual's immune system. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Health workers, health workers, the elderly, and those with underlying health conditions are more at risk for each virus. Right there, they're injecting their evolutionary thought process, okay? Elderly and those with underlying health conditions, those who, have, who are already sick, those who have pre-existing health conditions, you know, that's what they're talking about. See, you're looking at uh, euphemism, euphemisms right in front of you, people, and are more at risk for each virus. 
Is it the cold, the flu, or COVID? What to know as the all-seeing eye spreads rapidly. Do you see that? That's what we're talking about. Is it the cold, the flu, or COVID? Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the, for the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. This is all about confusion, people. And who is the author of confusion? Wake up! Wake up! Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks, man. Woman, come on now. The World Health Organization notes that the viruses are also transmitted in similar ways through droplets, like going around <laughs> spitting in people's mouths, right? And aerosols that can be passed by on by coughing, sneezing, speaking, singing, or breathing, which is why <laughs> diapering. <laughs> To protect others is widely encouraged by an officials. And what happens when you diaper yourself? You're breathing in your own CO2. Hence, making you weaker to their, <laughs> to their biological weaponry. Oh, why can't you? I know why. I know why. Because you lost people. You love your own selves. Because you're all about yourself. You're all about your flesh. All about what makes you feel good. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> While the word is relatively new and rising in population, popularity, excuse me, cases of flu and corona going to get you, co-infections are not. And fluorona is not a distinct disease. And that's it on that. Praise the Lord. We're done looking at that stuff. Okay. Now, beg, beg your pardon, brethren. Oop, 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 oop. I beg your pardon, brethren. Oop, oop, I got that too big. Oop, oh, I beg your pardon, brethren. There we go. There we go. Okay. Get this. Now I'm just... <laughs> I beg your pardon, brethren. This is not... There! <laughs> Beg your pardon. So see, this is all about confusion. And this year just starting, brethren. And you got the all-seeing eye variant out there. And this IHU, that's nothing. And this fluorona, this is a thing of, as we saw in the article. Is it a cold? Is it a flu? Or a corona going to get you? See, these two are going to be outdone to make it that it's Corona going to get you. So they can use their weapon of depopulation. Okay? Psalm 91 in the authorized version of the scriptures. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. We're going to be reading verses 3 on to verse 10. If you're saved of the church of the living God, this is for you. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. You need to come to the Lord broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow. It's your fault, and you can't blame other people but yourself. And be afraid of the Lord and call upon his name, and may he save you. Okay? Those of you who are saved of the church of the living God, surely, verses 3 on verse 10, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. Amen. You want to be set free from all this nonsense? Get saved. Get the authorized version of the scriptures. The Son, if the Son make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Okay? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, 
nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. See, the Lord save you, you become part of his body. He will protect you. He will provide for you if you do what he says. Okay, He saves you. You're going to heaven. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. But down here, while in the flesh, you know, your spirit and soul are in this skin suit. Okay. He'll protect you and provide for you. Okay. He had, you know, nor have I seen his seed begging bread. Okay. But you wander outside that. Why should he protect you? You die, you're saved, you're going to go to be with the Lord, okay? But that doesn't mean if you deny him down here, he might deny you protecting you from some of this nonsense. See, that's why we got to really pay attention to how we adhere our lives to the scriptures, okay? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague Come nigh thy dwelling. And of course, familiar scriptures, go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy, not Hebrews. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 11. Okay? This is correlating on to us who are saved. Okay? And incidentally, no one who is truly saved of the church of the living God not a Christian, because Catholics are Christians, but someone who is truly saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You look at me. No one of the church of the living God is ever going to promote getting and taking of the steel of the Jesuit poniard. No one who is saved is going to be promoting that. No one. If you got someone calling himself a Christian, saying, yeah, get the steel of the Jesuit poniard, all for it, they ain't saved. Oh, Brad, you bet your, yeah, yeah. No one who is saved would be recommending that poison. No one saved would recommend that. No way. No way. No way. You got a Christian saying, it's the Christian thing to do to roll up your stuff. They ain't saved. They ain't saved. No way. No way. That's a kind of deception that only comes from confusion from Satan. The Lord, no way. No way. No one, no saved man or woman would ever be promoting that. There's no way. No way, buddy. No way. Why is that? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 11. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You ain't got a sound mind. You're going along with this stuff. You get the steel of the Jesuit upon you, it affects your pineal gland. Okay? You don't have a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality immortality to life through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. So see, being saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we are not to fear this thing. We're not to have fear. We are to trust on the Lord. But see, if you don't have the Lord, and you have someone coming to you in religion, in Christianity. Remember, Catholics are Christians. Catholics are your enemy. Catholicism is Satan's church. 
Catholicism is your enemy. Okay? And those who are way too busy attacking the Church of the Living God, they're Catholics also. They're working for the Vatican. You're working for the Vatican, you devils. You might not be, you're not good enough to be a Jesuit, perhaps. Even though you may want to be, you're still serving the Vatican. And even your own provincial wants you to go away. That's pretty... That's pretty interesting. When your own provincial wants you to go away. That's, wow. Wow. That's pretty, yeah. Yeah, that, that in and of itself, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Your own provincial doesn't want you around. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess you truly ain't on anybody's side, is you devil? <laughs> but see, this, this kind of thing that's being fed to you people, the, the article that we looked at that is basing confusion. That's not from God. What's that from? James chapter 3. James chapter 3. This you've got to watch out for. James chapter 3. We want verses 13 on to verse 18. James chapter 3. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Who is a wise man who fears the Lord and endued with knowledge among you? See, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You have wisdom, the fear of the Lord, the Lord will impart to you knowledge. Okay, that's how that works. All right? Who is a wise man who fears the Lord and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation, you shall know them by their fruits, his works with meekness of wisdom. By good conversation. Not only by speaking, but walking your talk. So many out there can speak a really good game, but they don't walk their talk. They wear that facade, see? They're one thing in front of a camera, then behind the scenes, they're as fake as a $3 bill. I've known of many people like that. See, the person you see here is the person you're going to get away from the camera. This is who, you, this is who, you, who I am, okay? What you see is what you get. With these devils, what you see ain't what you get. Okay? Come on, people. Let's continue. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, this fear, descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Earthly represents man. Man came from dirt. Okay? Sensual. Led by your senses. By your feelings. Devilish. Self-explanatory. See, this wisdom, this wisdom right here is not the fear of the Lord. This wisdom is the fear of man. Which Satan is instilling in people. Okay? For where envying and strife is... There is confusion in every evil work. Look at the devils here on YouTube and on other platforms. Strife, envying strife, confusion in every evil work. Look, look what's going on today. There's envying because you want to you wanna be able to get back to normal and there's no getting back to normal. That brings strife. And confusion, like the article we just looked at? Is it the cold? Is it the flu? Or is it Corona going to get you? See, what's going to happen, like I told you, Corona going to get you is going to envelope all of those. That's their end game. Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, wants you to believe that the worst plague to all of mankind is Corona going to get you. That's what they've been pumping down your throats now for what, two years? And you fools are going to believe that? The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Read the scripture sometime, buddy. You talk about plague. But the wisdom, verse 17 in James chapter 3, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable, 
gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The information that we can look at on all this stuff, it's full and littered with hypocrisy and confusion. And it's meant to be that way. To bring upon the stage uh, within the theater of deception, the theater of deceit, to bring upon the stage that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's going to be in another video uh, about uh, Mr. Prince Charles talking about the son of perdition in a present tense form. Okay? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. See, the Jesuits want to bring about peace by gunpoint. Or should I say, sword point. <laughs> but see, that peace that passeth all understanding comes from the indwelling of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, one God that dwells within us. It's the Church of the Living God. Does it... It can be like that for you too, dear friend. You just got to get over yourself. Because you got to remember, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 32 and 33. Not 15, Brad. Verses 32 and verses 33. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Now, are there Old Testament type prophets today? No. Despite what these charismatic Pentecatholics want you to believe, there is no new revelation of things to come outside of Scripture. No. Someone who prophesies today is someone who has the Lord within them speaking to you through the Scripture. That's how, that is what prophesying is today. So, the spirit of the prophets are subject to to the prophets are subject to the prophets so if someone is prophesying speaking in the name of the lord through the, uh, through the holy ghost through the scriptures okay that's when jesus christ is come in the flesh comes into play okay someone who is prophesying and it says that they are subject to the prophets. Where are the prophets? What they wrote, what they spoke, where are they located? In the authorized version of the scriptures. So the, and look at that verse, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. There are some of you out there who are unfortunately Pentecatholic, Pentecostal, who I believe are on the right track. You need to get out of that system, brother. You need to get away from that. Pentecostalism is not of God. Okay? It is not. If you're a Pentecatholic, I'm sorry. Uh, I got messed up with that for a while too. Okay? Early on in my uh, walk with our Lord. Um, it's not of God. But remember, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And there are no Old Testament prophets out there giving new revelation that are outside of Scripture that contradict Scripture, like all these charismatic idiots that you see, like the Sid Roth type of people and stuff like that. Okay? No. Those guys are of Satan. Okay? For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. That's not a building. Churches collections of bodies of people okay not a building god is not the author of confusion but of peace who is the author of confusion who is the author of confusion oh i wonder uh go to second peter chapter one and you got to remember this second peter chapter one second peter chapter one verses 19 on to verse 21 Okay, the spirit of the prophets. Today, someone who prophesies as the Lord within them speaks to you through the scriptures. The Lord is speaking to you, spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay, that's prophesying today. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets' scripture. 
Okay? With that said, we got to remember, uh, verses 19 on to verse 21 in 1 Peter chapter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and that's what it means to prophesy. And the Holy Ghost dwells within us. And who is the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He leads us to speak the word of the Church of the Living God. He leads us to speak His word. Not the new revelation that comes outside of Scripture and that contradicts Scripture. No. And as far as private interpretation, like Catholics do, like some of these Christians do, like Oh, you want the deeper teaching on this? You got to pay me money to get the other DVD. See, this is what them Ruckmanites have done to their little hero God that they've made, Peter Ruckman. Okay, the the, the Ruckmanites, you uh, okay? People, uh, unless they buy them from them, have no right to post anything that Ruckman did. And these Ruckmanites went ape. And got channels shut down, get people fined. They probably would get people killed if they could, okay? If you want teaching from our Ruckman, you got to pay us the money. Private interpretation. Private interpretation. Beware of that. Beware of people who are selling you the truth. Beware. You want the truth, you got to pay me for it. You want more? You want you want a deeper teaching on this? You got to pay me for it. Beware of people like that. Beware of people like that. I don't care who they are. They're selling it. <laughs> you want to know more? You want to know deeper, huh? Give me the money. Pay me. Pay me, yeah? Yeah, right. Yeah. Good luck, hotshot. Good luck. So, we see that confusion is not of God, and private interpretation and stuff like that. This uh, wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. What does Satan, what does he concentrate mostly on? Flesh. Flesh. What about these people who fall for that? Oh, go back to Jude. Or, excuse me, go to Jude. See, the video that was done previous, this video and Lord willing, the one that will come, they all tie together. They all work together. Jude, verses 8 on to verse 10. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Know not! As through a relationship. These devils like John MacArthur, uh, who know so much of everything, who have an answer for everything. Pete Ruckman, he had an answer for everything. You ever listen to his question and answer thing? The guy had an answer for every single thing. There was nothing that he didn't turn away where he said, I don't, don't know. If there is, I don't, I never heard of any. I have never heard of any where he bluntly passed over something and said, well, I don't know. Okay. MacArthur, uh, Ruckman, guys like that who have an answer for everything. They have a lot up here. But see, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. As to a relationship. A personal relationship. How many out there do indeed have a head knowledge, but it ain't they don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have they don't have any relationship with him. You shall know them by their fruits. But what they know naturally, unregenerate. Because why? They're of the earth. They're earthly. Came from dust, dirt, as brute beasts. 
in those things, they corrupt themselves. They corrupt themselves in the things of the world. Do you not understand, dear friend? See, by following the Jesuits, what they are instilling upon you, you are corrupting yourself in the things of the world. You are as brute beasts. You're doing only what you know naturally. That ought to terrify you. And of course, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's really drive this home. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 29 on to verse... Get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> verses 14 on to verse 16, looking at the other notes. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. That's capital S. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God. Capital S, the Spirit of God, receiving God himself. When he seals you, when you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he save you. Okay? Then he comes into you and seals you until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Okay? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why not? Because you're, you're not saved. You're still in your flesh. You still live by your flesh. That wisdom that's in you is earthly, sensual, led by your feelings, devilish. These charismatics are all about your feelings. Well, I have a feeling. I have a feeling you're lost. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? I, the Lord, For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Why is that? Because Christ lives within us. But see, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Because it's foolishness. You're unregenerate. So you're more than willing to receive this mass confusion and this propaganda and this psychological operation to bring about that man of sin, the son of perdition. You're more privily, uh, you're more privy to receive it. You sure are. Now go to First Thessalonians chapter two. First Thessalonians chapter two. First Thessalonians chapter two. Verses 13 on to verse 18. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when we when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Why is that? Because you have the Spirit of God within you. Okay? Remember, earthly man receives not the things of God. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye, have, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, these devils. They're contrary to all men. They are contrary to all men. Absolutely. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may, might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Oh, all you devils. See, see, that's what they want to do. They want to, especially here on YouTube right now at this time and on other platforms, these guys who are calling themselves Christians, King James, Bible-believing Christians spending their time pointing the finger and attacking one another and bringing up accusations against those who have been called to positions such as this. That's all they live for. See, what are they doing? They're contrary to all men, and they want to pr inhibit, prohibit, um, hang up, let 
those who are seeking truth to find it. That's what they're about. They are hindering by all their condemnation and accusation, while they themselves have nothing to do with the truth. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them from the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would not wherefore would we come unto you, even I Paul, once and again? But Satan hindered us. How does Satan hinder people? Hinder, let. How does Satan hinder people? By confusion. By fleshly means. We've already looked at it. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. And look what these devils, these devils preach. Philosophy and vain deceit. Okay? They they can't even, they hardly can rip verses out of context. They're so scripturally inept. But oh boy, they can be like a little schoolyard boy making fun and attacking people, right? And uh Exhibiting the uh, fruits of condemnation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Satan hinders by confusion, by flesh. Oh, yeah. And see, these devils, who are all Catholics, they all love the flesh, don't you, boy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And see, look at verse 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, which I just passed over. Romans chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me, not against me. Verses 29 on to verse 32. Someone who is unregenerate. Someone of the church of the living God can exhibit these things, but God within them would be screaming, afflicting, um, afflicting them, or in, in worst case scenario, killing them. Okay? Verses 29 on to verse 32 in Romans chapter 1. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, Shh, whisperers. Oh, See, these devils are really good at whispering campaigns. Very good. I know of one, two, actually, specifically from Northeast that are really good at that. We're really good at that. And that still, apparently, are still doing that today. <laughs> the fruits of condemnation, you filthy scumbag devils. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Backbiters. And they accuse us of backbiting. When they themselves, among themselves... Devils amongst devils. Hey, I used to have, I don't have it anymore because I couldn't stomach it. I used to have one of your live streams where a bunch of your devils, and remember that crazy drunk lady that you let in? Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to speak, but I can't get a word in. Yeah. Listening to that live stream with what the six of you, interesting number, was so rancid. That's how devils behave amongst devils. Especially with that weird drunk lady. Oh, that was crazy. I, I don't have that anymore, so I can't upload it. Or, or I wouldn't anyway. Because who's the one uh, who's afraid, afraid of doxing there, tough guy? Yeah. But, um, yeah, when devils are around devils... See, when... Other eyes are watching, they might be able to pull it off. But when it's just them amongst themselves, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, <laughs> backbiters, haters of God, excuse me. I skip, we skipped this one. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, Oh, yeah. Look at what the Jesuits have done. They have invented evil things with the psychological operation that is going on. Look at these devils who make up accusations of those of us of the church and living God. 
coming up with cl things clearly out of the clear blue sky and just lying about them. You know, just sitting there like, uh, and then all of a sudden the devil, hey, wake up, the camera's on. Uh, oh, oh yeah. And then come up with lies? They invent evil things. The Jesuits have invented all this evil. They have invented it. Okay? Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Implacable. Unmerciful. Natural affection. Do not publicans do the same unto those who show them love? Do not lost people show love unto them who show them love? Natural affection. But see, these devils, they don't even have that. Even amongst themselves. When, when people are watching, yeah, they can fake it. But when it's just them amongst themselves, devil with devil, their father is the devil, wow, wow. Implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See, there are those out there who know the true gospel know what it is to be saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. They know it because they've been around it. They have infiltrated themselves to learn what the true gospel is. But yet they're still lost and fake as a $3 bill. You guys are beyond hope. And I'm convinced to you, you know who you are. You think that on your deathbed, you're going to repent of everything and then get into heaven. You're stupid. You're pretty, you're pretty brilliant in other things, but you're overall stupid if you think you're, if you think it's that easy when you've lived all your life as a wicked, deceptive, scumbag devil, and you think like Constantine, you're gonna sit, be on your deathbed and repent and then get into heaven. Ain't gonna happen, pal. Ain't gonna happen. It would be nice to see you get saved, but that ain't gonna happen. Because of you. And also that tragic young man who knows what the true gospel is and yet lying about brethren and making false accusations against brethren who loved you and who were there for you. You know the truth and yet you're lying against the church of the living God. You have on your side youth. Just like your good friend from Canada. There, I'm finally talking. I talked about you, you stupid idiot. Uh, like your young friend in Canada. You both have youth on your side. So when we get caught up and you're left behind, knowing what you know, hopefully you too will be part of that great multitude that gets saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hopefully. See, you have youth on your side. Old devils like Beelzebub of Blackpool. They're beyond hope. You're beyond hope, man. I would hope that the Lord would prove uh, me, and not only me, but many wrong about you, but you're beyond hope. Your own provincial wants you out of the way. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's pretty, that's, that's pretty bad, man. That's pretty bad. And see, what is uh, Satan's temptation? It's all about flesh, okay? We've talked about this before. Go to James chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 15, okay? James chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 15. Now you Catholics, open up your ears a little bit and listen to the scriptures. Let no man say... When he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now, when talking about this, Okay? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. 
What kind of lusts? What can entice you other than flesh? See, Satan's main temptations and attacks are all aimed at flesh. Why is that? Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. One verse. Verse 23. And we're going to kind of dissect this verse a little. Okay? Now, uh, this... <laughs> <laughs> this is after, according to Catholicism, after the Lord made Peter the first poop. Um, but then our Lord said this of the first poop, and Peter was never a pope, by the way. Never. Ever. Okay? Remember, Catholicism, Catholics, Jesuits are focusing on Peter because Peter was the apostle to the circumcision, the Jews. Catholics are replacement theology. Remember that. So they want to attribute to themselves Peter as being the uh, uh, apostle to the circumcision. Hence, they are replacing the Jew. Okay? That's how that works. But, verse 23. Our Lord Jesus, Jesus said to the first pope, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Why is he an offense? For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So Satan savoreth the things that be of men. Flesh. And because Satan savors the things of man, Revelation chapter 12, we, we covered this in the previous video, but we're going to cover it again. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren. A really good surefire way to uh, spot a fake is how often they accuse those who are truly saved. And all they do is bring about accusation and condemnation and strife we, we, we've already looked at it okay telltale way telltale red flag okay but look at verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death we we talked about this in depth in the previous video so i'm not going to get into it right now okay but the accuser of our brethren because he savoreth the things that are not of God, but the things that be of man. And what is man? Flesh. You read Job chapter 1 and 2. You'll see this. Job was one of God's people. God said of Job, he is a, one, uh, an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. He had, he had the best testimony you could ever have. You, uh, Job had God himself say of him that he was uh, one who feared God and eschewed evil. You can't get no better than that. But yet Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Read Job chapter 1 and 2. You'll get the picture, okay? But now go to Galatians chapter 3. This is where this is going to get really interesting. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 19. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, am I in the wrong place? Yes. Beg your pardon. Galatians chapter 4. <laughs> Galatians chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 19. I beg your pardon, brethren. Galatians 4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. 14 on to verse 19. I wrote down Galatians 3. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. So Paul's talking about his temptation, which was in his flesh. Ye despise not. So there was something that these people were able to see hmm, of his temptation. Let's continue. Where is then the blessedness he spake of? For I bear you record that if, I had, if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. 
Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Again, we covered this in the previous video. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Look at what they're doing with the psychological operation that they're doing today. Looking, look at the confusion that they're feeding you today, people. Okay? But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And there is none good but one. That is God. Okay? And not only when I am present with you. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. But this temptation that was in his flesh. This temptation. Whatever it was, it says here, And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despise not. Remember, Paul's physical appearance. He was beaten. He was covered in scars. He probably had uh, eye issues. He was a frail, whooped man. But yet, the Lord living within him, mortified, he mortified his body, quickened his mortal body. Okay, But his outward appearance was contemptible. He even said that of, him, of himself. But see, And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despise not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Because why? He was Christ's ambassador. And what does this lead us on to? Matthew chapter 7. See, Paul's outside appearance was ugly. Kind of like what our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53 and Isaiah chapter 52 and 53. Read those two chapters. There was no beauty in him that the lost world would desire him. And this beautiful Catholic Jesus. Come on now. But Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. The temptation that was in his flesh. Um, the temptation in his flesh. Maybe to boast. Hmm? Maybe to boast. Remember, too, in the book of Galatians, that is dealing with those who are trying to bring people back under the law. Okay? But, Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven, ravening wolves. They put on a good facade. They look beautiful on the outside, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. And Paul was just the opposite. He was ugly. His outer appearance was contemptible. Um, his outer appearance was base, and his speech was contemptible, wasn't it? But yet, God within him, God within him spake, okay? But most of the time, these guys who look really good on the outside, don't judge by the outward appearance. Don't judge by the outer appearance? You mean we're supposed to judge? Boop! Uh, yeah! Yeah! How are you to judge? Okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Hey, you devils, how are you strengthening what you call the body of Christ? Hmm? You're weakening it. You're not strengthening people. You're not strengthening them, strengthening them in, the, in their walk with the Lord. You're not encouraging them. No. You're attacking the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Yeah. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruits ye shall know them. And as we already looked in Galatians chapter 4, um, by their fruits... Paul on the outside didn't look like much. But he was known by his fruits. Why? Because the Lord was in him. He was crucified onto the world. But yet Christ lived in him. And the life that he lived in the flesh was lived by the power, the strength from God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go to 1 Peter 
chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verses 12 on to verse 19. Okay? Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Don't cave in, church of the living God, to any of this. Stand and fight. The Titanic is sinking. Be one of those that continue to shovel coal into the boilers for as long as, it could, as they could, that light may be on the sinking Titanic. And remember, our deaths are not in vain. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Especially with what the, the confusion that is being sown right now. Okay? The confusion. It's better that we look ugly onto the world. It's better that we look ugly onto the world than to, to look beautiful onto those of the world. <laughs> because so they thought of the false prophets. If ye, re, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Now pay attention. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. matters. Look at verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but... Let him glory, glorify God on this behalf. Now, people will come to this and say, see, it's okay to call ourselves Christians, okay? Well, I don't think that is sin. I want nothing to do with the name Christian, the term Christian. We ourselves never called ourselves that. But see, what is Christian here in context being compared onto? What is it being compared onto? It's better to be to die as a Christian than to die as, or to suffer as a, excuse me, as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Okay? It's better to suffer as a Christian than one of the above in verse 15. This does not give credence that we called ourselves such because we never did. Peter is referring to the term Christian in a negative connotation here, brethren. Okay? He is. Look at the scripture. Okay? Look at the scripture. Oh, I know where it says in verse 14. I know that. But what is he comparing Christian onto? It's better to die, to suffer as a Christian than to suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, busybody, and other men's matters. It's a negative thing. We never refer to ourselves as that. Just saying. Remember, Catholics are Christians. And are you going to waste the time of the said person to try to explain to them what's the difference between you and a Catholic? It's better to say, I'm of the Church of the Living God. What's that? Inaccurately referred to as a Christian. Because remember, a Catholic is a Christian. Oh, see, I've applied that outside. It's not as hard as you think, and it's not as hard as you make it out to be. Is it a doctrinal issue? Well, as time is going on, how are you going to discern a Christian? I, online, how are you going to discern between these King James Bible-believing Christians? Distinction, people. Distinction. Enough of that. I can go off on that for an hour. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Oh, and the falling away. Oh, boy. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? 
Wherefore let them that suffer to the will uh, let the wherefore excuse me let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well doing as unto a faithful Creator. But see, judgment begins at the house of God. Those who say that they are of Christ, of the Church of the Living God. But see the falling away. Okay, the falling away. Those who say that they are of us, but they are made manifest to show us that they ain't all of us. Because if they were, no doubt they would have continued with us. But what gets in the way every time? Flesh. Flesh, what you Catholics worship. Because, now, look again at verse 20 in Luke chapter 22. It's interesting that Peter had something to say on this about the, in verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you? It's very interesting that Peter was the one to speak about this. Why? Go to Luke chapter 22. Very interesting. Very interesting. Luke chapter 22, we want verses 31 and 32. Luke chapter 22. It's very interesting that Peter would would speak on such a thing in such a way that the Lord would have him to speak. Why? Luke 22, verses 31 and verse 32. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Peter was not yet converted, was he? Oh, no, he wasn't. And this is a long time after <laughs> yeah, Jesus apparently made him the first pope. He wasn't converted. But Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. The accuser of the brethren, to sift you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, go back to Matthew chapter 7. Go back to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. No, no, no. Let's, uh... Oh, and I can't pause this. Verse 22. Oh, oh, brethren, I have just lost my place. I have just lost my place. Was it Matthew chapter 17? Bear with me here, brethren. Bear with me. Bear with me. I just lost my place. I just lost my place. Where was this uh, supposedly? Matthew 13. Okay. Beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Matthew 13. Beg your pardon. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 on to verse 9. I beg your pardon for that. Matthew chapter 13. I don't know why I put 7 down there. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 on to verse 9. Okay? <laughs> because now, let's get back on track. Satan wanted to sift Peter. Okay? And Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, talking about the fiery trial. How does Satan sift people? We looked about that in Romans, and we have discovered and have concluded that when Satan tempts, when Satan brings things on upon people, flesh is always the outcome, something to be derived in flesh. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 on to verse 9. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up, came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7. 
and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. The parable of the seeds. Now, let's look at verses 18 on to verse 23 in the same chapter. Our Lord gives the ex explanation of the parable. Hear ye now, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and, of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, Satan, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. How many of that will, uh, how many people out there will hear the scripture? But yet Satan's like, ah, that's nonsense. Don't worry about that. They go away. But he that received, okay. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word. Wait a minute, I just skipped some. Oh, yeah. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that was heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath no not root in himself, but it dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by, which anon means, he is offended. So there are those out there who will claim to be of the church of the living God for a little while, but when their feet get to, uh, put to the fire, then they fall back. So they were only of the church and the living God in name. That's so like, oh yeah, I'm saved, I'm born again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jesus. Oh yeah, I love Jesus. I accepted him into my heart. God knows my heart. Yeah, then he gets a uh, tribulation. They fall back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Verse 22, he also that receives seed among the thorns, this is the one to note, is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful, choke the word. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground, into good, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold some sixty some thirty now looking at verse 22 he also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful Choking the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Who is? Who has the good of this world? Who is the God of this world? Hmm? The little g, God of this world. Oh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. No, excuse me. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, re I wrote this wrong. 2 Corinthians, that's the third time I've done that in this video. This is kind of impromptu, by the way, if you haven't noticed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Who is the God of this world? Who is the little g, God of this world, given to, uh, given over this world for judgment? Who is the little g, God of this world? 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness like these devils do, like the Jesuits who have created the psychological operation, okay? Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, which all these devils do, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But by manifestation of the truth, they walked their talk. Okay. They walked their talk. They preached the gospel. They lived of the gospel. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
in whom the little g, God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. So when thorns come up and choke the word, that it becometh unfruitful. Notice in verse two, uh, verse 22, verse 22 in Matthew chapter 13, He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the care of this world and the, uh, he also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful become unfruitful because it cannot be allowed to grow it's nagging there but it doesn't be allowed to grow why because it hasn't been pruned okay it's not bringing forth fruit why because it's among thorns okay it doesn't mean that in verse 22 it's talking about someone who is saved no it's talking about someone who has heard the truth but it's still there but yet Things of this world get in the way. Doesn't mean anything that they were already a saved man. And besides, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, by the way. Okay? Just keep that in mind. We're looking at this for instruction in righteousness, obviously. Uh -huh. I have to apparently say that, okay? But now, go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. The little g-god of this world is Satan. And when it talks about here about the thorns, among the thorns, the cares and deceitfulness of riches of this world, go ahead, roll it up, take the seal of the Jesuit poniard, get back to normal, always wear a diaper on your face, but yet be aware, you got to have three of them, the crown, the pyramid, and the all seeing eye. Interesting. you got to have all three seal of the Jesuit poniard to be totally safe. <laughs> but yet you still got to wear a diaper? Come on, people. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Have to go to Luke chapter 4. Have to. I know I mentioned it. We mentioned it in the previous video. I know, but we, we have to go here. We have to go here. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. What does Satan promise if you follow him? And the devil... Luke chapter 4, verses 5 under verse 7. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And how does he use that? Number one, he goes after your flesh, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, okay? By how? Instilling confusion. Confuses you. So see, when Satan comes along to tempt you, his temptations always have to do with the flesh. Always. Some might want to ask that devils be come into them, but why? So that they can gratify their flesh. Look at Kevin Copeland or Kenneth Copeland, okay? That man is littered with devils, but yet those devils within him are what? Profiting his flesh that he has his best life now on earth. So see, again, the devil concentrates on what? Flesh. And those his ministers also concentrate on what? Flesh. Uplifting it as they are doing with this psychological operation. All the temptation, all the confusion is flesh-oriented. Why? Because Satan savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. That is why. That is why, okay? That is why, dear friends. Go, go to Ma uh, Luke chapter 16 now. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. See? Get the steel of the Jesuit poniard, get back to normal. But see, this is all preparatory to have you lost people take the mark of the beast. And without the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell during the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the mark of the beast, 
you're going straight to hell. Uh, unlike what Baker and Kim talk about, you can't lop off your hand and save yourself. You can't gouge it, out, gouge it out of your forehead. No, you take that mark, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? Why? I believe because it's going to alienate your mind against God. Today, the steel of the Jesuit poniard, while not the mark of the beast, it's making people sin against God. Yes, dear friends, taking the steel of the Jesuit poniard is making you sin against God. You're in sin. You're in sin for taking the steel of the Jesuit poniard. No one of the Church of the Living God would ever, ever be for such things. And if someone's saying they are, are, are of the Church of the Living God and telling you it's the Christian thing to do to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard, they're just a Christian. They're not of the Church of the Living God. Not at all. Not at all. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 9 on to verse 13. Now, you got to remember something here about this. This is about the unjust steward. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. The unjust steward. When you read the unjust steward, about the unjust steward, did the unjust steward ever turn to the Lord to try to make an amends with the Lord? No. What did the unjust steward do? He went to worldly means to cover his own backside. You can read the context of that from verses 1 on to verse 8, okay? But we are picking up at verses 9 on to verse 13, okay? And I say unto you, now when our Lord is saying this, okay, he is not, I've heard so many people who are Christians, it's like, well, you have to have the right relationship with money, okay? And they will come to this. But see, the context is, you know what? Let's read the context, shall we? Let's read the context. Let's read from verses 1 on to verse 13. Can you handle it? Okay. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. He calleth him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now, how does the steward guy react to this? Does he go in repentance to the sky? It's like, hey, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please forgive me for what I did. I, I did wrong by you. Please forgive me. Don't cast me out of the stewardship. Please, I'm sorry. Did any of that happen? Let's see. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. Look what he does. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. They. Did he go to the Lord? No. But he concocted a scheme how to cover his own backside. Let's keep reading. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors. Onto him. It's like, see, see how I'm doing good by you? He didn't go to him in repentance. No, but instead, he thought about his own self. How am I going to protect my own backside? So I'll make it look like I'm doing good by helping out my Lord. And he said, so he called every one of his Lord's debtors onto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. He didn't demand of him the whole tale. But see, he did only in half measures. Twofold, trying to make it look good unto the person who he was talking to, that he had his Lord's interest in mind, but to cover his own backside. Never at once really having his Lord's honor in mind. Never. He was doing this in the wrong pretense, wasn't he? Let's continue. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write fourscore. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, Unto who? 
of the church of the living God, those who are saved, no. And remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is not unto us. Okay? And remember, those who are a friend of the world are the enemy of God. Okay? Yeah, there is nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money. Okay? But that's what he is talking about. Look, look at this. And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fall, when you when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. So the Lord commended this guy, you did good by them. Didn't do good by me, but you did good by them so you can protect your own backside, see. Then he comes in with this. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have been faithful in the unrighteous... If, the, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And was this unjust steward faithful to, with the unrighteous mammon? Apparently no. And ye, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And what does Satan offer you, mammon. What does Satan offer you? The cares of this world. Hmm? See, our Lord was not saying to those that were right with him to make friends of the unrighteous mammon. No, this unjust steward blew it and didn't go to his Lord in forgiveness, seeking forgiveness. No, he just immediately is like, okay, I'm done. Uh, I got to cover my own backside instead of trying to make my uh, make it right with me and my Lord. Never did any of that. He thought of him own self, his own self. Hence, the heretic, the false, the infiltrator, the coadjutor. Okay, they don't they don't have their Lord. They don't have the Lord's interest at their heart. They have their own interest at heart, and their father is the devil. So hence, in a way, yeah, they do have their father's interest at heart, but their father is the devil. They don't want to make them, themselves right with the Lord. They don't want to go to the Lord in repentance. No, no. It's all about their backside, which is Satan, uh, Satan is offering on to all of you right now who are not saved through the confusion that is going on today. Do you see? Do you see that? Okay. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and this is for sure first corinthians chapter 10 okay first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 remember paul's temptation in his flesh paul struggled with pride okay first corinthians chapter 10 verses 15 under verse 22 i speak as to wise men judge ye what i say the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? What is an idol unto these devils? They're a little pucarist that they worship. The cup in the hand of Mystery Babylon the Great. Huh? What is their idolatry? Themselves. Yourself. You idolize yourself. You worship yourself. Yeah, in context, yeah. Uh, an idol... Referring on to a little statue, sure. But at the heart of it, at the root of it, idolatry is what? Putting something above the Lord. 
How many of you have made yourself your own little God? How many of you made yourself your own idol? How many of you idolize yourself? Hmm? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Look at what Paul says here. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. <laughs> Thought about smiling in Canada there for a minute. And of the table of devils. You're either or. You can't play. There is no middle ground. Okay? You're either saved or you're lost. Okay? You, there's no option C. There is no middle ground. You can't play both sides and expect to be right with the Lord. You can't play both sides and be fruitful. Something has to die. Either you will love the one or hate the other. And which one is it? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Yeah. If you're saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus, the church of the living God, yeah, God's jealous. He doesn't want you putting your affections on the things of the world. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And why? And, you know, one of the things you have to ask, go to 2 Kings now. 2 Kings chapter 1. 2 Kings chapter 1. Why are you looking to the instruments of a foolish sep uh, shepherd? Hmm? Why? Why is it? Huh? Okay, 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 3. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, <laughs> the little g god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Rise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is no capital G God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? You'd rather go to Beelzebub, Satan, than to God. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. The instruments of a foolish shepherd. And you'll see this in Hollywood. The right eye is often darkened. I mean, look at those Star Wars pictures or posters. Uh, the newer ones where their right eyes are darkened. There's a thing about uh, President Trump that had his right eye darkened. Okay. What is that? That's a mark. <laughs> With every pun intended. That's a mark of those that are of the son of perdition. The foolish shepherd. Who is the foolish shepherd? Satan. So you would rather go to Satan and his church than go to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through his word, the scriptures. Hmm. 
brethren, it's this uh, people. It, it's it's so obvious what's going on right now. It, it behooves me that anyone, you know, that anyone would be falling for it. But this is the times that we live in. Go to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight, verses thirteen on to verse seventeen. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 on to verse 17. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Through the Spirit, that capital S Spirit, that's the Lord. That through the Lord you mortify, put down the deeds of the body. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. See, in looking at verse 13, Mortifying the body, the deeds of the body, to do it right, it's, but if ye through the Spirit, through the Spirit, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who dwells within those who are truly saved, born again, converted, sealed, you know, that's the seal until the day of redemption. The Lord will guide you to mortify your body on how to do it and what to go, uh, go away from. There are, however... Some that can copy, imitate, fake it in a way. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 23. Colossians chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 23. And having spoiled in principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. And context in meat, not being kosher, you know, uh, you can eat pork. In drink, okay, you can drink some alcohol, okay, don't get drunk, but you can drink alcohol. In respect of an holy day, what are the holy days talking about there? What, do you, what is he talking about? I believe in context or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Holy day, a day that you decide to put aside, a day that you decide to put aside to worship the Lord, yes. But the holy day that I believe Paul is talking about here are the ones that are already given in Scripture. That's what I believe he's talking about. He's making reference onto a holy day as the ones in Scripture. Okay? which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now, in reference to Holy Day, which are a shadow of the things to come, the trumpets, the feasts of the Lord, which were holy days, okay? They were shadows of things to come. So in context, when he says Holy Day there, I believe the holy day that he's referencing are the ones already referenced in Scripture, not the ones that we come up newly because of Catholicism. That's all I got to say about that. Let's continue. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he, which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And see, Lordship Salvationists, give this, this, this up, and then the Lord will give you this, this, and this, being puffed up by your fleshly mind. And remember, people can have a changed life and not be a new creature. They can out of the will of their own flesh, being what? Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Someone in their own flesh can do abstaining from certain things, can through the will of their own flesh abstain from certain things, clean up their own life, but yet not be a new creature. 
See, that's what Paul's talking about. Let's continue. And not holding the head. As we already looked at in Romans chapter 8. Okay? Not holding the head. Through the Spirit of God mortifying the deeds of the body. Okay? And not holding the head. If you're holding the head and the Lord is guiding you in certain ways of mortification, then praise the Lord. But see, the people that Paul is talking about are not holding the head. What does that mean? They're not saved. But yet coming up with all these traditions of men like Catholics do, like the Lordship Salvationists do. Okay? And not holding the head from which all the bands by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Okay? See, Paul's talking about those who don't hold the head. Okay? That's what he's referring to. And I believe it's a reference more so onto the Judaizers who want to bring people back under the law. Okay? Because Holy Day, which are a shadow of things to come, shadow of things to come, the Feast of the Lord. You read about this in Hebrews. Okay? About that these things are a shadow of things to come. Okay? The Holy Day there referenced are the Holy Days already given in Scripture. I would like you to prove me wrong. Okay? Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as through, why as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Which those who want to bring you under the law, like Catholicism, but they don't want to bring you under the law of Moses. They want to bring you under their own law. Okay? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which, are all, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship. Oh, they look good. Their facade is really good, isn't it? But you shall know them by the fruits. <laughs> what are they away from the camera? What are they like? Mano y mano. Hmm? Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Our Lord talks about how they fast for strife and debate and they, they, they disfigure their faces to make it look unto men like they're fasting. Oh, look at me. I'm so holy. I'm fasting today. Oh. Now let's read Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 9, and we'll be done. Okay? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, not things of the earth. Because why? The things of the earth have been given over to Satan for judgment upon this earth. Okay? Satan is the little g-god of this world. Okay? He has to answer to God who is in control of all things. But Satan has been given dominion on this earth for judgment. Okay? So we are to seek the things that come from him, not the things of the world. Okay? Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Why? Because the things that are of this earth, this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And I ask you, are not all of those idolatry? How so? Because what do all those satisfy? That's right. That's right. And through all of these, not just covetousness, 
but to all of these can lead onto idolatry. And what is that idol? Yourself. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, who hear the truth, like in the parable of the sower, but Satan come and taketh away, or he gives them the things of this world, and they're choked. He becomes unfruitful because the word is choked by the things of the world. In the which ye also have walked, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So the mortification, true mortification. See, someone can, um, someone can fake it in a way, so to speak, which we read in Colossians chapter two, by the uh, by will worship. But see, true for, true mortification comes from the spirit of the Lord, who will lead you and guide you into all truth. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. You're gonna do that. You're gonna. Okay, fine. Oh, you're sick now. Oh, go imagine that. See, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. God doesn't want you mingling with the things of the world. He will give you things of the world that is needful for the flesh, you know, like your food, clothing, stuff like this, a house, uh, when actually it's having food and raiment, let us be there with content, okay? But see, mortification, true mortification comes from the Lord, okay? And our Lord is not the author of confusion, We have to beware of Satan's temptations because of all of Satan's temptations, dear people. They're all confusion and they all have one aim, flesh. All have one aim, flesh. And, you know, I told you we would have been done. Um, yeah, we are done. We are done. Um, got to read a part in Genesis, but that's okay. That's going to be it for this video. This video is very, very impromptu, as you can tell. <laughs> as you can tell, couldn't uh, pause or anything, but this was just, had to do this video. Had to do this video. Um, people, what's going on right now, it, it, the Jesuits are blatantly deceiving you. The Jesuits are blatantly rubbing in your face their plans. And how many of you are falling for it? How many of you are falling for it? Be aware of these things, brethren. People, please, be aware of these things, okay? Be aware. Run from these things. You need to come to our Lord Jesus Christ, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name, and may he save you. Watch out for these things, dear friends. Watch out for these devils who call themselves King James Bible-believing Christians. And all they do is cause strife and debate, even amongst themselves, and they speak nothing of truth. This is only what, the eighth? That is going to be it for this video, brethren. Thank you so much for watching this, if you do. Uh, hopefully this has helped. Um, like I said, this was very impromptu. Sorry for my stuttering and mumbling and bumbling. I, I, I beg your pardon. Um, this is another collaborated video. So, But anyway, like I said, that's going to be it. Got things to do yet? Thank you, Church of the Living God. Body of Christ, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us. And also too, brethren, we have a brother. His name is Jeff, and he lives in North Dakota. And I asked him permission to do this. Uh, our dear brother Jeff is, he's got a lot of health problems right now, and he, has, he is no longer employed because of his health problems. Um, he needs all the prayers he can get. 
So please keep your brother Jeff from North Dakota in prayer um, that the Lord will provide for him and remove all obstacles from him because he's got a bad heart and um, he's been working for many years and got all kinds of chest problems. Uh, please keep him in your prayers. Okay? Please keep him in your prayers. We love you. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Okay? Till then. Bye-bye.